Hey guys, welcome back to Small F1 2018 and part 13 of our Mercedes career mode. And in today's episode, we are taking part in the Belgian Grand Prix at Spa, the historical circuit. It is wonderful. Um, and so far, we've had really, really good pace. We, we were second quicker than Lewis in Q2, um, although he was using the soft tyres. So right hopefully, we can have another... Um, Paul here, we're the only car that's been in the 43s all weekend, and I'm hoping to put in another good lap. So here we come into the bus stop chicane. It's been a good lap, not our best so far, I would say, though. So here we come up to the line. What's it going to be? It should be pole position for the moment. A 43.9. That is a very... Good lap, 1.1 seconds quicker than the Red Bulls of Ricardo and Verstappen. And we're already out of fuel, so getting back to the pits is going to be fun. Not. Here we go then, guys. Let's take it on a lap of Spa. Frank Sharms, Hamilton and Vettel have stayed in. So they're not going to be challenging for pole position, which you you know you would say probably we're already guaranteed it. But let's go and rub it in their faces and set an even better lap. I watched Magnussen on the lap and he was really slow through the middle sector. That is where we are bossing it. But having said that, we did Eau Rouge and Radion absolutely perfectly. We're on the Kemmel straight now, coming up to the first sector split and already. We are three tenths of a second better than we were last time out. We are absolutely in the zone here. Gaining time all the way. Getting our breaking points pretty much perfect. That was a slight lock up and we went a little bit wide there, but still pretty decent. And look at that, we're already six tenths up on this lap. But this is where we're making the most time, a slight drop. And then flat through there. We've got so much downforce on this car. Feels absolutely incredible. We come through. Slight touch of oversteer there. Still absolutely brilliant. We go up against the wall. We're still eight tenths up. We're very lucky there. To be honest with you, we were second up there. We could have been into the 42s. I don't think that's going to happen now. Coming into the bus stop, chicane, get that breaking point absolutely perfect. Wrestling the car through and we come up to the line, what's it going to be? It's a 1.429, I think. We may have gone into the 42s. That was dominant. The grid is all set then for the race to... Oh, 43 all. Let's quickly remind ourselves of our top three, who are the captain, Hamilton and Sebastian Vettel. The grid is set then, so that just leaves the race itself. Join us tomorrow, where we'll be live with all the action. And until then, it's goodbye. That was absolutely brilliant. I don't really get why the AI are quite as slow as they are around here. I mean, we're 1.2 seconds ahead of Hamilton, and that's with brushing the wall um, up before Blanchemont. But uh, Hamilton and Vettel, interestingly, doing exactly the same time. Uh, as each other, so Hamilton must have set it first. But uh, there you go, there you have it. Pole position for the Belgian Grand Prix. Let's hope we can dominate this one and get some points back in the championship. Who doesn't love the Belgian Grand Prix? It's the race, of course, that gave maiden pole positions to the Jordan and Force India teams, with Rubens Barrichello and Giancarlo Fisichella, respectively. Jordan, of course, would then go on to better that here in 1998 with their first ever victory. And you can guarantee that something special will always happen at spa Francorchamps. But what that something is today is anybody's guess. Spa Francorchamps then, a historic 19 corner circuit with a lap distance of 4.35 miles. There's over 100 meters of elevation change here and with long stretches of the lap spent flat out, a good top speed will be vital for success. 
Joining me for the Grand Prix once again is Anthony Davidson. Let's talk briefly about Kevin Magnussen. As ever, the threat of unreliability is never far away, and indeed they'll be starting out of position today due to a power unit component change. So it's going to be a difficult task to move forward from there. Everyone has to deal with penalties or reliability issues from time to time throughout their career. You just have to suck up the pain and get on with the job at hand. Today isn't about performing a miracle to put the car back where it should be. It's about effective damage limitation. So before the off, let's remind ourselves of yesterday's qualifying session with a look at the starting grid. The captain lines up on pole position and Lewis Hamilton completes the front row. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Vettel, Ricardo, Max Verstappen and Raikkonen, Hülkenberg, Grosjean, Ocon and Fernando Alonso, Sainz, Perez, Stoffel van Dorn and Magnussen, Ericsson, Stroll, Charles Leclerc and Sergei Sorokin. Gasly and Brendan Hartley rounds off the grid. And now it's time to head down to the track. So here we are down on the track then. Um, it all went good yesterday in qualifying. Uh, very, very happy with that. I'm going to just add an extra lap of fuel into the car um, and hopefully we'll be all right i think i might skip the formation lap simply because it's such a long one here at spa um, so i think what we will do is just skip the formation lap and get straight into the grand prix here we go then Lights out, away we go here in Spa, Frank Achamps, that's a good start for Lewis Hamilton, but we have the inside line, so we should be able to hold the lead after the first turn, and we do, and look at this, we got so much better traction out of La Source, and now going in Eau Rouge and Radion, and up the Camel straight, we should have been able to break the slipstream, but Lewis Hamilton is still coming back at us. Is he going to be able to take the lead? I don't think so. We're all right. Well, that was a bit of an intense start. It was a good start for both of us. We managed to go down the inside nice and cleanly into the first turn, but uh, it's certainly not over yet. Lewis Hamilton starting on the soft tyres, so he's on a different strategy to the rest of us, which is going to be interesting in itself. How's Lewis going to cope in this Grand Prix but we have been mighty through the middle sector so hopefully we can break that DRS window we nearly binned it there <laughs> but I think we're all right we've managed to steal the march on Lewis and Lewis is going to do Bottas's job as the perfect wingman Okay guys, so we're going to come into the pits at the end of this lap, Ham Hamilton's unfortunately dropping down the order now, um, I think mainly because of the tyre deficit and just how overpowered the DRS zone is around here this weekend, but uh, hopefully he'll be alright, and uh, we're going to come into the pits now, so that's uh, time for Lewis to be in clean air, and here we go, we're into the pits. So, Mercedes, get me out before Vettel comes in. Go, go, go. Nope. We're away. Oh my goodness, that's got to be an unsafe release. <laughs> Inside the Renault. But uh, lost a couple of seconds there, which is frustrating. But luckily, we built up the gap, but... Uh, just need to make sure we don't leave the white light. We don't, so we've got to look after these tyres till the end of the race, and uh, luckily we haven't come out in too bad traffic, so we should be okay to come back out in the lead, but Lewis Hamilton, it's up to him now to, to go and use his tyres and his energy and whatever to try and build his gap. We're not going to be able to run in this engine mode much longer, we're about a lap over target, drop down to mix too soon.
Well, I was saying that we weren't in much traffic, but I forgot how much of a pace advantage I had over these guys. These are very, very slow in the middle sector. It's just we've got so much more downforce. I think we're allowed to because we've got a good engine and, you know, we don't need the skinny wings that Red Bull had in real life. Look at them all, they're, they're just a hazard to us. Being led by a Sauber at the moment. But hopefully we'll be able to make a move on Hartley down into the bus stop. Well, maybe Gasly as well. we'll just try and let Ericsson go into the pits. And he has done. So we're alright. A little bit tentative, but be okay we've got a, a big pace advantage over these guys and tire advantage so we should be able to get past them fairly quickly so Rockin might be quite quick in a straight line actually so we might not catch up to him until the middle sector where inevitably we'll nearly go into the back of him in Puon or something like that but uh, I mean you can even see over the Williams we're gaining a distant tour here it's a good sign for Italy in a uh, next episode or tomorrow for you guys um, but you can just see how much time we're gaining over these guys in the middle sector I mean we nearly lost our front wing there it's ridiculous we shouldn't have to be breaking like that to, to make sure we don't lose our front wing we're going to go down the inside which is a risky move into poo on but it had to be done. It was less risk than staying behind and put it that way. Now, we got Van Dorn fighting with Leclerc up ahead. So they're going to go through Blanchemont now. Can we make a distant move on these? Or will they, they go into the pits? They may well go into the pits, which would be good for us. And they do, so don't even have to deal with them. Now, got a nice bit of DRS as well. And it's time now to use the clear air, look after the car, and make sure we get this victory. So Lewis and Raikkonen are in the pits then, and we're going to easily come through. So unless they have a, a massive jump in performance on the super soft tyres, I think this is going to be your top three everyone. Well, I thought we'd just casually put the fastest lap in guys. I thought I turned up the whole car. It was very silly, really, but, you know. I thought we might as well give Lewis a, a, a challenge and faster slap to get on his uh, super soft tyres. It'll certainly be interesting to see if he if, if he does go and smash it now. But, uh, at 146.8, that's your target, Lewis. Well, guys, on the final lap, and unfortunately, this Belgian Grand Prix has been just as interesting as the one in real life. Not a lot of action after the first lap. Uh, I'm glad we actually got a few overtakes done um, while um, we were waiting for people to make their pit stops, but uh, the checkered flag is out and we're ready for our third Grand Prix victory. We win the Belgian Grand Prix. Driving. That's a race win. So as I say that, we can see the drivers coming out now to collect their trophies. It's yet more silverware to take back to their base in Brackley after another excellent Grand Prix. After this round of the World Championship, here's how things look in the driver's table. The captain takes over the lead of the driver's championship. 
Moving on to the driver of the day then, Anthony Davidson, who would you go for? Well, you put me in a bit of a tight spot today, but I think I'll go for Pierre Gasly. He kept a cool head under pressure and made the most of some difficult circumstances. And now let's take a look at the constructors' standings. Mercedes have extended their lead at the top of the standings. It was great having you with us for this weekend. I hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. Until next time, though, goodbye. Well, there you have it. We have won the Belgian Grand Prix and took the lead in the Drivers' Championship. Um, I mean, all I can put it down to is a, a freak weekend. You know, I don't think we need to drastically move the difficulty up or something like that. I think we just had it hooked up this weekend. Lewis Hamilton did end up with the fastest lap of the race, a 146.5. He must have done that on the last lap, the rascal. Um, but he did manage to get past Verstappen, which is good. So he did finish fifth in the end uh, and got 10 championship points. But that just wasn't the strategy to go for. Soft then, the super soft, uh, unfortunately. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it was a bit like Button in 2012. You know, where Button just dominated that weekend and, you know, there was no real reason to it. It just, he got it hooked up. We got the setup right and, yeah, everything was good. Good day today. Tell us about it from your perspective. Do you think that your close rivalry has helped you out this season? You've taken the lead in the championship. Are you going to be able to keep up that momentum? It doesn't get much better than a win at this track, does it? What do you think made the difference between this weekend and last weekend? Great, well that's everything. So there we have it. That was the uh, media interview. I forgot you guys were there for a minute. But uh, there you go. You can see we absolutely thrashed Sebastian in the rivalry. We are leading the one against uh, Lewis as well, which is really good. Uh, got some resource points, um, which is always very, very good. Clean up 100%. Not often you get that uh, on this game. But... Um, yeah, look at our reputation when Mercedes went right up. And we're, we have full reputation with all but Mercedes and Red Bull and Sauber, weirdly. Um, everybody else absolutely loves us, which is fantastic to see. And uh, there we have it. So, well done. Keep pushing like this for the rest of the season. So there we go, we'll have a new rivalry in the next episode as well, but uh, the performance chart looks like that, I know I haven't shown you it uh, for a few episodes, that's because we haven't really been upgrading the car, I think um, we're basically putting everything into durability at the minute, so uh, that that's where all the money's uh, being spent, um, but yeah, as you can see, the, the, the midfield is definitely bunching together, and slowly working its way towards uh, Ferrari and Red Bull. Hopefully they'll catch up to us sooner. It is quite demotivating to keep doing developments when we're not being followed by the, the other guys as well. Um, and, you know, we are completely dominating the championship right now. Uh, and if you look at the season results, a Mercedes car has won the last seven Grand Prix, um, or eight of the last nine, in fact, as well. So... We're definitely in a good patch of form at the moment and we're going to take some stopping in the rest of this season. But if you have had, uh, if you have enjoyed that, then make sure you do leave a like down below. It really does help me out. It means a lot to me as well. Subscribe to the channel for regular F1 content and I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. Thanks for watching and goodbye.